Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, let's call this uh, meeting to uh, order. Township of Warminster, the Board of Supervisors for Thursday, April 6, 2023. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay um, standing, please, for a moment of silence for, uh, I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. Let's please have a moment of silence for all the children in our schools that are being shot um, randomly, please. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right, welcome everyone. Um, we have some announcements. Um, the board had an executive session where we discussed uh, litigation and uh, personnel issues. Uh, I do have Mr. McKee is uh, on assignment, top secret assignment, so uh, he won't be able to make it tonight. But I do have some announcements from the Parks and Rec you know, on, on Mark's behalf. All right. So, on April 15th, tax day, there's a community yard sale scheduled from 8 to 1 p.m. at the Warminster Community Park. Uh, register your space at warminsterpa.myrec.com. That's warminsterpa.myrec.com. Uh, the 28th annual Robert Ducky Regatta is scheduled for Sunday, May 21st at Kemper Park. You getting in the water this year, Mike? Yes, I am. Excellent, excellent. Uh, that's a fun time. Um, the ducks will go on sale at the end of next week. Uh, so call 215-443-5428 for more information. And I'm sure we're gonna have plenty of chances coming our way. Is that correct, Mike? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, excellent, thank you. Yeah, please support that, that's a fun time. Uh, registration is open for the, hold on. For the Philadelphia Phoenix Ultimate Frisbee Camp, June 26th to June 30th, and July 17th to July 21st. Uh, that's a new one on May, uh, but it sounds fun. Uh, facility permit requests, including pavilion rentals, have moved online now, which is a wonderful thing, making it easier for everyone. Uh, visit warminsterpa.myrec.com to reserve facilities for your upcoming picnics and parties. And that's all we have from the Parks and Rec. Um, that's, all, that's all I have for now. Kath? I just wanted to say that Janice had mentioned uh, that she was working the egg scramble event. And I didn't want to triple on, on your thunder here, but my granddaughter was there and at, at the park and I, I, and I heard it was a really good time. So I'll let Janice fill you in. That's all the announcements I have tonight. Okay, thanks Kat. You're welcome. Uh, go ahead Janice. To, to go off of Kathy, it was a great event. It was nice to see people young and old as well. Um, I got to escort the bunny around, so that was a lot of fun, and posed for pictures and was holding babies. It was great. I enjoyed seeing all the kids out. It was a, a great turnout. And to see, see all the, and they had some nice prizes and big blow up bunnies and everything. It was a lot of fun, and it was nice to see the members of the park and rec board out there as well, working hard. Good day for all, and hope everybody comes out next year when we do it again. And no raindrops fell. That was nice because last year it was a little wet. <laughs> Ready for me? Is that it? We had a at the library tent the camp out the first first annual library camp out. That means they're going to have it every year. It was such a success, even in the rain. Everyone had a wonderful time. They had excuse me. They had all kinds of projects and games and things to go on for children. It was just a lovely time and around 200 people attended. So that was a great success. And my hat's off to the Friends of the Free Library because it was totally sponsored by the Friends of the Free Library. It didn't cost the taxpayers anything. So thank you for attending. Uh, by the way, the uh, library has had um, a 20 
six percent visitor uptick from February to March, which is higher than prior to COVID. So the library's doing some good things and people are getting excited and they're coming, they're coming to the events. Um, I want to remind people once more, there's uh, going to be a uh, senior expo on April 20th at the Bucks, I'm oh, sorry, the Benjamin Wilson Senior Activity Center. And it's from one to three and there's going to be all kinds of vendors there to give you information on things that seniors need and little tchotchkes and things for you to collect and pens and things like that and candy probably, but there's also going to be information on reduced tickets for trips and reduced ticket tickets for, for uh, the movies and uh, information on uh, projects that they have at the Ben Wilson Center for people. So I hope you can all come. Thanks, Judy. I do have one more announcement. I know um, we've been uh, working with our fire um, departments um, to try to solve the issue of uh, some shortages during the day. And uh, I just want to say that next month you're, you'll be pleasantly surprised. We're really, really close to getting everything all hammered out. And uh, I think it's a, a great thing for Warminster. So I'm not going to get into a lot of details now because we have some more stuff to iron out. Um, but next month we'll have a nice announcement and hopefully the uh, both fire chiefs and whoever's not actively working can uh, can be here for that so thank you can I mention one more thing too off of yours um, on Wednesday nights for those of you that are young 14 and over that are interested in firefighting or if you're not sure I encourage you to come out to the Hartsville Fire Company because on Wednesday nights starting at 630 they have a group of young boys and girls 14 and up that are learning how to be firefighters so it's a great opportunity to come out you get to meet the firefighters you get to learn new things um, and it's a good experience come check it out because you never know because by the time you're 16 then you can you're already ready to take the test so that'll help get some of our younger people in. And parents, I encourage you, if you have 14-year-old children, get them out of the, off playing their games and get them out, and then they can meet some new friends, too. All right. Thanks, Janice. Mm -hmm. So we do have a presentation, um, and I see our senator, state senator, uh, Frank Farry, is here. But we seem to be missing our state rep. Has, have you seen him, Frank? I saw him earlier today. Did you? <laughs> oh, boy. No. All right. So, um, can we take a short recess, please? Just a two or three minute recess. You're the chairman. Yes. <laughs> I'm asking. I was looking that way. Great. Thank you. All right. That's what I was checking. All right. Yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, pardon us for the uh, short intermission. Um, however, the presentation is for um, we've been awarded uh, some additional funding thanks to Senator Farry and State Rep Brian Monroe. Uh, Brian's not here at the moment. Uh, we don't have the check with us, but. I just want to uh, let the community know that 
we've been awarded an additional six hundred thousand dollars that will be going towards uh, redevelopment at Shenandoah Woods. So who, we have Frank Farry here, Senator Farry's here, and we also have Jeff Darwick from the Redevelopment Authority. So come on up, guys, and uh, tell us a little bit about it. This is fantastic. This is more good news for, for the park. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, thank you, Chairman and Board Members. Um, you know, it's always great when you can bring money back to the community to make a difference. Um, especially when it's a new community and new in my representation here. Uh, I've appreciated the time we've had to meet to discuss some of the issues and, uh, and we met with, with Tom and some of the staff a few weeks ago as well. So appreciate those opportunities. Um, this funding actually comes from a tax on internet gaming. So when you see all the sports betting on TV and all that sort of stuff, um, it's legislation we passed several years ago. Um, the tax goes into a local share account and then it's uh, competitively distributed so it's really great that we were able to get the funding and bring it back here for the project. So the funding goes to the Redevelopment Authority and then Jeff can explain the process. But um, you know, when we first met with you guys and you talked about projects you had outstanding, this was one of the projects you sought funding for. And uh, we were honored to have the opportunity to help you and, uh, and get this money awarded so you can get the rest of that project cleaned up and, uh, and get, get, get on to better days there in Shenandoah Woods. So thank you for the opportunity to be here and we look forward to continue uh, working on projects such as this moving forward. Great, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, hey, Jeff. You, and I know you've had some great news. We've been very successful with our contractor there. It's, it looks great over there. First it's a nice class job. contractor, a, a great team that we have uh, from the township, um, the contractor and the professionals. So it's been a, a great experience, a great project. Um, so I hope everybody in the township is uh, happy to see the progress. And, um, Thanks to the senator for securing additional funds. Um, we're going to put that to immediate use as soon as we sign the uh, contract documents, we're, which we're anxiously waiting for, um, so we can you know, get that uh, money back here to the township. Uh, so, yeah, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to mention that this is the first uh, ever local share account statewide gaming grant round. Um, so, congratulations on uh, securing one of the first of these types of grants and uh, we will continue to pursue uh, additional grants for this project on behalf of the township so long as we're involved in this project. Uh, so hopefully we'll, we end up something with something uh, that everybody in the community is proud of. So. Great. Thanks, Jeff. And you yep. guys are doing a fantastic job there. Uh, you know, the, the, all the buildings are down. Uh, was, uh, the, the contractor, um, uh, Fritz, I forget his last name. Thank you. Banky, that's right. They did a fantastic job. The dust suppression, erosion control. I mean, it was it was fantastic. And now we're going to take the slabs up. I think we're getting ready to start that part very soon. Yes. Right, right. Which is which is great because now we can employ our engineering staff to come up with a nice design and get our NIPTES permit. <laughs> that's on the record. Um, and move forward with the uh, the final the final plans where we're going to make nice walkways and and, and, and paths and, and make it a passive part of the park. Which I'm excited. It's it's been a long time coming, and I, I want to thank both of you for all your efforts. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, let's move on to uh, land. Yeah, we were we were uh, hoping Brian would be here um, with the check to get some photos, but uh, I guess he uh, I guess he has something uh, pressing to take care of. So uh, anyway, it's uh, it's fantastic, and and both our state rep and our state senator were instrumental in getting that us that grant shovel ready. We have another million dollars um, coming from the federal government um, for the Shenandoah Woods as well. So it's, it's a fantastic um, opportunity for us that we don't have to drain our capital uh, budget. Um, these, these funds go directly to the work that we need to get done over there. And it's just, uh, I'm thrilled that um, we're not exhausting our, our capital funds and some people are helping us out finally. So very nice. All right, now we can move on to land use, public hearings and ordinances. Uh, let's start with the uh, WMA lot line change on Street Road. Um, 
No. Yeah. Yeah. They're not here. They're, yeah. They're not here. Either. <laughs> <laughs> I can, we can handle it. Just can we just it? handle it? Yeah. 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 Handle it, handle it. yeah, let's handle yeah, it. We'll handle it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a small lot line change. Um, the WMA parcel um, is at 105 East Street Road. Uh, they're going to move a lot. Their line and transfer approximately 1,500 square feet uh, to the owner of the adjacent parcel. Who's the owner of the adjacent parcel? Friends. Uh, the Society of Friends. Yes. So. Um, the property is located at 105 East Street Road. Uh, Scott indicated it's a half acre, uh, non conforming lot. So they needed a variance that was what was holding up after our review quite some time ago. Um, they needed a variance to reduce that, that lot area because it's under an acre. It's not conforming, it remain non conforming. And they also proposed no improvements uh, on the property. So um, they have their variance, they have review from our office. Uh, this is the smallest type of project you can get. It's a lot line change. Um, Scott prepared a resolution. I'm assuming they had no issues with it since it's just uh, memorializing our review letter. Um, the zoning officer's letter, emergency management's uh, fire marshal's review letter, and then... Um, Placing new monuments. And the zoning hearing board's decision. And the only thing is to place monuments at the new property boundary. So it's it's ready for um, for your approval and I have no other comments or issues with the project and, and they're not building anything they're actually realized that the part of the cemetery property the cemetery itself right. was across the lot line onto the WMA mm -hmm. uh, so they want to that's why they need to adjust it yeah yeah um, it's just extending their cemetery and the WA doesn't use that parcel anyway. I believe that's abandoned. We were, that was for we, a, a an old well, a potential well or an old well that was there, right? Which is abandoned yeah. now. You, right. you can add a condition that Mr. Hagen, Mr. Dalton uh, owe us uh, a round of golf uh, since they're not yeah, here. Yeah, since we, since, <laughs> we, since we handled that's the WMA matter. Tonight. That's right. So okay. It's Fair in enough. In order for your approval, <laughs> for your approval tonight. All right. So that's uh, uh, resolution number twenty twenty three dash. What number uh, we up to? 13? 13? Okay, thanks. It says 12. That's the, uh, that's the application. That's, that's the application. Motion to approve. Second? Second. Okay, any questions or comments from the board? From the public? All right, let's call the question. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The chair votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. All right, thank you. You're welcome, Tim. I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm jumping out. Just kidding. Okay, <laughs> next, State 90 York Road additional waivers for Eco Sheet. Uh, I'll handle that one, and I actually lied to the last one. This is actually a smaller project than, or smaller. action item, action item than the, the one uh, you just had. I think the representative here tonight, they can give a quick, a quick um, summary of, uh, of what you need to do. Um, this came from my office. The, the, um, as you know, there's field changes all the time that happen during the construction projects, but two of these required a waiver. I was uncomfortable doing that as field changes. They involve paving and curb work. I'll let, uh, I'm not sure. Douglas Moore. Oh, Douglas, okay, thank you. I'll let him explain further, but um, you should have everything in your packet, and I think everything's in order tonight. Thank you. Um, I will keep this brief. Uh, my client did show up for this. this Thank you. So. <laughs> <laughs> love to be here. Um, just a very simple uh, modification, basically a field change uh, to change part of the parking lot, which referred to as phase two of the construction project, uh, from asphalt paving to gravel. Um, in order to accommodate that, we need two waivers, uh, one for the change from asphalt to, to gravel, and the other is uh, to allow a berm in place of a, a, a hardened curb. And they're the only two waivers we're requesting. You would approve this project back in uh, October of 2021, and this is a modification of the previously approved plan. So we're simply seeking approval of those two waivers. My client has reviewed the proposed resolution and has, uh, and has already signed the acceptance of the conditions if the board is inclined to grant the waiver request. Okay. And just real quick, and the areas that you're looking for the change, it's employee only areas. These aren't public access areas, correct? That is correct. Employee only, and I, I believe some minor uh, storage. I have said, uh, is that, 
is that going to be compacted? Yes, it, it still complies with zoning. It still complies. We worked on stormwater. Okay. That, that was probably the, the hang up was trying to address stormwater management since right. it's still impervious. Um, and then there's no curb. So uh, that's been worked out already. Uh, and um, once that was, they're ready for approval for you tonight. Okay. I have no other, no other comments or issues with the project. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve uh, resolution 2023-14? Motion. Second? I'll second. Okay. Any questions from the board? No. Questions from the public? Craig asked, answered all the questions. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've been through the packet. Okay. Let's call the question. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? And chair votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much for coming in. Could I hand Thank out you. the uh, Yes. Sure. Absolutely. Right, here, right to Jill Doug. Thank you. Thanks for coming in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate that. We appreciate you showing up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Moving on. Next, which is 455 Nina Way. This is a preliminary and final. Um, uh, Craig? Uh, the, the applicants here tonight, um, before Mr. Malloy um, speaks, I just want to let you know that you have not seen this project before. However, it's been around for a while. Um, this started at sketch plan level. Um, they had bigger plans, I think, than what you're seeing right now. The building was much bigger at the time. Um, they work through zoning issues, they work through engineering issues, uh, some nat natural resource issues that really impacted the property and how you could de develop it. It's also a corner lot. Um, so we had to work through all that. We worked through a sketch plan, planning commission. Um, did you go to the zoning hearing board or not? Went to the zoning yeah, hearing board. Yeah, they went to the zoning board. hearing board. Right. So At which point they accepted the condition to reduce the size of the, okay. the building. Yeah. So although you've seen it uh, for the first time, there's been a lot of work on this project. Um, there are some, and we'll get in, if you have concerns about the waiver, we can talk about them, but um, they worked with us on conditions. Each waiver has a condition. We, we had to work with what was given out there on the site with large trees, uh, buffering issues with Merns Road, and just, you know, trying to develop a site that also with a drainage easement, a large drainage easement in the back. Mm -hmm. um, so again, uh, I'm okay with the preliminary final. There's no other planning issues. I'll let uh, Mr. Molloy present the project. Um, but again, you have not seen this one. I, I, I'm pretty familiar with it, though. You are. I, I know. <laughs> I know. So, uh, so I'll turn that over to Mr. Malloy. Yeah, thank you very much. Mike Malloy over my Redmond Maxwell Hipple. My client showed up at 6 o'clock, <laughs> but she was sick, and I told her, go home. I said, okay. But I do have Wayne Kiefer here from uh, Showalter and Associates, and he can walk us through. And just, just really for the record, right, this is a really special one. These people, the applicants who own this company, live here in your township and are consolidating several businesses, business locations to sort of locate their main operation here. And they started the company in around 2018 and they've built it from scratch. It's a multi-million dollar operation now where they install telecom equipment on uh, cellular towers across the country. So they have crews that go out. Um, they needed some of the waivers you'll see and some of the little extra parking space because they do have large trucks that park. It's not a high intensity area. There's not a ton of employees. Um, it's a little warehouse space and a little office, you know, a warehouse space and, and some office space uh, to accommodate their, their use. But this is one that's, um, that I think the township should be really proud of. These guys have, have started here, choose to live here, want to employ people here, and uh, are building their main headquarters, this uh, 19,000. 580 square foot building. The lot's industrially zoned. It's just overgrown. It's not a forest. It's not tree. You know, it's not a woods. Um, they did their best to preserve as many of the trees um, abutting the residential area. Uh, where you'll see we are encroaching, and, and Wayne can walk you through it if you have any questions. Uh, the side that we've asked to encroach into that class one buffer is abutting an industrial use, and the applicants assured everybody that they're going to do the full plantings. Uh, required but within that buffer area so um, I could put the plan up or Wayne could walk you through it but it's it's a square you know um, uh, basically uh, on the lot so I'm um, happy to answer any questions and we're satisfied with the resolution as well you want to see the plan right there's, there's, you want the plan. yeah yeah can you put it up there for us and uh, sure. 
I mean, I'm familiar with, yeah, with it, but I don't know if the if there's there's other sure. board members. There's not are. much to look at. There. Through dimensionally and stuff. Yeah, I know, there's, I know there were some trees. Yeah. Um, there were, unfortunately, I know, some of them were sort of smack and right. In the middle. Where, yeah. yeah. Where you, you just can't Which do anything else. Makes it ahead. Yeah, yeah. 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 You were, you, but you were doing the maximum that you could do, and that's fine. And I, I appreciate that, because sure. I am a tree hugger, of course. And I also like that, you know, with the with the stormwater that Craig that you that you're happy with everything that they're doing with the stormwater management. So uh, you don't you don't have any. Uh, it's a constrained lot with that easement. It takes up two frontages from this lot. So yeah. okay. Um, two or am I wrong about that? One frontage. Sorry, one frontage, one side. Shaded area in the middle is the uh, proposed warehouse, just under 20,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Darker gray around the left side and on the top of the plant is the drainage easement that is being preserved. That is wooded. Those trees are being preserved. The site is just about two acres. We're adding 80 trees and shrubs onto that site besides what's there to remain. It's probably going to be the most landscape plant <laughs> property in the area. Um, as we mentioned, we're encro encroaching into the buffer on the right-hand side. That is an industrial area, and I think if the project had been developed as part of the overall subdivision, there probably wouldn't be a buffer requirement there. Right. But we are addressing that. Okay. Um, and then to touch on stormwater, again, it's in the Street Road Industrial Park. Um, even though there's regional basins in there, um, they are complying with their own stormwater management like every other project since uh, there's issues with that basin, as you know. Yeah. Um, so they're addressing all the stormwater. You can see the impact, the reason for the waivers. Uh, that's a large drainage area. I'm not sure you've seen one bigger than that on a lot this small. So no, not, not uh, this small. without trying to go through and try to amend that, uh, they shifted everything, which then impacted the buffer and, and created some waivers. So we did work through all that. Uh, they even had an arborist go out um, at our direction to try to hone down on the uh, trees and woodlands. And um, I have no other comments. Um, you know, it's, They've been working for quite a while. I know there's a little frustration at the beginning with the owner and what they wanted to do and they had to scale it back, but um, it's ready for your approval tonight. And besides the waivers that are listed in the resolution, everything else in the two review letters is a will comply. Okay. Great. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion that we accept it. Okay. So you're, uh, this is 2023-15 now. So you motion to accept uh, or to uh, to approve preliminary, to approve and preliminary and final uh, resolution 2023-15 for 455 Nina Way, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. I appreciate the fact that you uh, you uh, preserved as much of the uh, um, stormwater features with the with the shrubbery and, and plantings, and we do appreciate you working with us on that. I yeah, please do because. As you know, for years, stormwater was ignored in Warminster, and it's become a huge headache, and we have to really, really focus on that. And, I'm, and I appreciate the fact that you complied, so, you know, and, and helped us with that, because every little bit counts, you know. So uh, uh, thank you very much. And I don't have any other questions, Craig, because I've been speaking with you I just a lot to, with this. I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I just wanted to say um, I, I'm satisfied also with what you've done with the, the stormwater and with all of the, the greenery. So uh, I think it looks like a nice project. Thank and you. welcome. And Thank it's you. nice to yeah, have a resident, you know, we appreciate that. Yeah. It's nice to have the resident uh, yes. put a put a, their headquarters here. It's, yes. It's, it, yes. It's, could well you, done. Thank yeah. you. Could you Please. thank them for me? I appreciate uh, that. Well, thank you. Yes. <laughs> huh? I, I'd like to ask, um, was this letter, I see this letter from Joe Velton that I was wondering if this was taken care of with making sure that the fire apparatus could turn around. Yes. We, we redid the uh, truck turning plan provided uh -huh. to the fire marshal. It was satisfied with what okay. we had. Thank okay. you. Anything else, Judy? Yep. All right. It's, um, oh. hmm? oh, well, yeah, I know. Okay. Anybody from the public? John, come on up. Just 
Top three levels, uh, 674 Joseph Avenue. On that diagram, I'm, I'm assuming that it may be also be a rental because it looks like they had two subdivided um, areas in the back with the garage doors. Or is it going to be an owner occupied completely? Are they planning on putting renters in there? Or? Completely owner occupied. Okay, that's all. That was my question. So the answer is completely owner operated. They unfortunately, had to parse up the parking lot like that to reduce the impervious surface and to mm -hmm. respect the Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, sure. Good. I asked the same question. Good question, John. Good question. We knew you were here to ask those important questions. That's, 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 good. Good. No, that's a good one. <laughs> that's good one. <laughs> Any other comments from the public? No? All right, let's call the question. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The chair votes aye. Motion carries 4 0. Again, it's a nice project. We appreciate everything that you did to. Uh, to help us out with storm order and uh, you know we hope the success for the company and keep that headquarters running for many years to come thank you very much I'll let them know really right. thank you it. thank you you're welcome Great. okay I know I saw it. 1250 West Bristol Road correct yes I uh, think you hit your quota for approvals so uh, was to be discussion only mr. Moy is that right <laughs> um, you, you saw this project two months ago mm -hmm. another uh, project's been around for quite a while I think we've um, everybody's worked real hard on both sides and uh, gotten to a compromise a lot on, on uh, the, the product that you see tonight the plan um, I'll let Mike go over a little of the history and then um, they have the uh, draft resolution um, we might can go through that if, or touch on that if you have any questions if not um, it's all ready to go for you tonight um, again this is preliminary only so you will see this again so any issues that you still have if we can work them out at final they'd be more than happy to do that um, if it's a major issue then we'll, we'll try to resolve it tonight I don't think there are uh, if it's minor and you still want them to look at something then we can um, have them address that and come back to final and have those answers. So I'll turn it over to Mike. One question before you start, Mike. Did, Rob, do you have drawings tonight? <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful. <laughs> I colored them in for him. All right. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> We're good learners. Yeah. <laughs> We're really, uh, we All right. From our mistakes. Um, which last time, I mean, we had a resolution, and I, I, I'll, I'll go back. I mean, this goes back before predates, certainly, I don't know, a lot of people's involvement. And uh, it, it's based on a settlement agreement with the prior owners and the township. And the settlement agreement allowed for you know, a certain amount of density, and it showed 26 lots, and um, maybe this is the third or fourth iteration, I don't know, of this plan. But we're down to 20. And it respects, you know, we think the settlement plan, which was attached to the stipulation, which Rob probably has on the disc if you want to see it. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, as Craig said, really was a back and forth and make sure that we pushed and pulled and, you know, respected as much of the environmental features as possible. Um, and. Rob will get up and you know answer any questions you have. You know we're happy with the resolution. It's the waivers that we think we need to pull this off, and um, um, the disturbance that we do have, I think, is the message is it's to the far less significant features, you know, of 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 the of the property, you know. So the woodlands that we're disturbing are not the great woodlands, you know, the good woodlands. They're the, they're the you know. And we have had an arborist go out. We have seen it. Um, you know, we think we um, have as little uh, I don't know, impact versus the existing uh, uh, development out there. And in fact, as Rob will show you, you know, a lot less in certain points. So you know, we've pulled back impervious surface that's closer to sensitive areas and sensitive features and the new development doesn't encroach on those anymore so overall you know um, we think it's an improvement and we think it's sort of really the best compromise kind of uh, place we can get given the constraints of the the ordinance which the stipulation didn't really address very well right, right. 
and the constraints of the, the stipulation itself. So Rob Cunningham's here, and I said, you know, we, you guys have seen this before. We've kind of talked about this. We're happy to answer any questions you have. Um, I don't really have anything for him specifically to present to you, unless there's. I'm going to kind of get, let you guys cue us to to say what you want to what you want to hear about. Um, in particular, any waivers or or anything like that. I'll if, I'll jump in if I could, Mr. Chairman. Sure, uh, just in case there's anybody new listening tonight or in the audience, uh, we keep referring always to a, a court approved plan. Um, just the court of common pleas um, ordered a settlement with the applicant, which was the Studley property at 1250 West, West Bristol Road. Uh, most people call it the Studley property and I learned that quite quickly that, <laughs> that that's, that's what it goes by. Um, the order was December 13th, 2010. So we're 13 years into this. Uh, the, there really weren't many conditions, and that's why it took so long, but there was a plan of 25 units that is much larger impact um, to the property than what you're seeing tonight. I know the engineer overlaid that. Um, I don't know if you do It's the that. third. I think it's the third. So I, I really think that's the most important thing and, and why there's so many waivers is the... Um, it's pretty hard to see on the screen. It is hard to see. Driveways it's in the same it. location. Um, so they reduce it from 25 units to 20. And Build one more, Jill. You can kind of see there's a red outline. Yeah. Oh, I see. It really pops mm -hmm. on, the, on my computer. I forgot the color of this one. There you go. Uh, so you kind of see to the top of the screen there, there is um, impact completely within the floodplain uh, in the wetlands. In fact, uh, there was units over top of the wetlands. Uh, which are now being preserved. So mm -hmm. that's where trying to take a plan from 2010, um, match it up with your new ordinances, and then um, you know, obviously the developer reduced the density to, to help with that, which I know was, was a big concession. Uh, in exchange for that, there's several waivers with conditions to make this, it'll be a private community, so you will not own this road, uh, this will be a private road, but you can see the impact, court approved plan to the plan now. I think that's the that was what we're seeing there in the red is the court approved plan. Yes. 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 It, it, it was, um, you know, it's an overall impact to the neighbors and, and uh, you know, the property itself and the natural resources. Yeah, and it was an impact to the natural resources, which yeah. is right along the Shamney Creek. Which is probably right. one of the bigger things that we had to work through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that that's how we got to the plan we have. Yep. Right. We now, applied the current ordinances. Okay. So, Rob, we see that. And then we see the impact that would have been to the natural resources and the floodplains and the riparian zones and all the stuff that's important for the residents and the township is you know now can you show us the go to the new plan and show us how everything's preserved please because i think that's important for the residents to see go to the second one that's a good one to show it's a comparison of our plan versus the existing aerial so you can go up one can you scroll down oh you can see it on here if you scroll down So you can see the existing house is in the repairing buffer. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going down, right? Um, the fence and the lawn, all of those items. This is actually zone one of the repairing buffer. This this is zone two. Our stormwater basin is in here. It's permitted to be in here. It's going to be vegetated. It, it, it will enhance the obviously water quality from the property. Um, so we're, we're kind of pulling improvements out of there. Um, we're pulling improvements back. Uh, I know this isn't a natural feature, but it's, it's further away from the neighbors. Uh, there's a driveway that goes all the way along the property line back here. We're going to be removing that. Um, and then, then there's additional parking and gravel, and that's right up against that uh, existing wetland. So even though we are going to be within the repair and buffer on that side, we're actually pulling improvements. So we're going to disturb the buffer just to remove right. the gravel, the cars that are parked there. Um, the other items. So we think that it's an overall improvement. It gives us the opportunity to, to revegetate that area, um, put in trees, planting shrubs, wetland plantings, whatever we, you know, coordinate with Craig and when we come back to final, we'll have a, a detailed plan of what that's going to be. But it's an enhancement. So and it'll it, be also deed restricted. It'll be part of the open space or deed restricted covenants put on. So okay. that yeah. will be able so to. So we're going to preserve the, the yeah. wetlands. Correct. And, right. and so the way that this is going to be. I guess 
subdivided for, for the homeowners is it's going to be uh, footprint ownership. So they'll, they'll own their home and their deck, but they don't own anything else. So the homeowners association or community association will be responsible for it. So it will prevent somebody from doing uh, some encroachment, something right. like that. In other words, backfilling it and planting grass Correct. seed. Yeah, <laughs> or, or coming in for a shed <laughs> right, uh, right. Or, or something like that. Um, and, and again, we, we're going to vegetate it really well. Um, you know, what makes this different than from some of the other properties that we've worked on is this isn't a raw piece of ground. This is a redevelopment. You don't think of it because it's, it's essentially a, a single family home or, or old farmstead, but that's what it is. It's a redevelopment of a property that kind of before the ordinances were there pushed the limit and now we're pulling them back and, and tightening everything up. So we think it's an overall improvement um, and gives us an opportunity to, to increase uh, the repair and buffer. Okay. And then, so I think that's all been resolved as far as at staff level, and uh, that was reflected in the approval tonight draft resolution. The other big issue um, was a fire was a secondary uh, emergency access. Uh, at one point, there was a trail proposed. Uh, I don't know if you don't sh do you show that yeah, the first you go up one. To the more first one. That's nice and clear. Um, yeah, please. That is something they still have time to. They're willing to work with us on that, but. Um, as of now, the adjoining property owner is not given permission. They are willing to work with the township on that. So that's not reflected in here. It's still shown. And um, at final approval, we'll have to make that decision whether there's emergency access to the back. That's not a secondary access, just emergency only mm -hmm. um, to the, um, I forget the road name, back there. Um, Law College, is that long? Law College is the one, the big one. I can't remember that. Yeah, it, it goes to Law College. Okay, okay. so yeah. So that's still reflective, but um, that issue has been kind of put until final approval. Okay. Okay. So, so Rob, one, that, one last thing, because I know we had talked about this before, and I just want, so, and this is really not for my edification, but just for anyone that's watching or anyone that's here, show us where the 100-year uh, flood plain is. The 100-year the flood plain is this dashed line here. Right. Comes into the site and it continues yeah so back so back. The, the the overall development is outside of that all yeah all work is done outside of the floodplain our driveways okay. outside the floodplain right um yeah okay uh, we're, we're high and dry good um and because we're pulling improvements back and we're going to do our storm management hopefully we're going to help every others in the community uh kind of with this development okay i would like to see the secondary access um you may have a 500 year storm, which we have every other year right now. Uh, you could have a clogged uh, culvert up by Bristol Road, uh, which then, you know, impacts flooding, I think, on both sides. Um, and they recognize that as well and are willing to continue to work with us and, and the neighbor um, on acquiring that uh, easement. So, again, well, that easement is for emergency services. Just correct? emergency. So, they, you know, if they had to, they get people out, right. They, right? You know, get fire trucks in there. And there, there was historically some talk about pedestrian connectivity through our property. We're willing to provide that as well yeah. as part of this trail or the emergency It could be access. a trail combination of emergency But if, if we want to block off both sides so emergency services is the only one who can access it, we'll do that. We're, we're open to have that discussion and, and we understand uh, the desire to have it. Unfortunately, we're, a, you know, kind of like an isolated piece here. And, you know, we reach out to the neighbor at this point, they're not willing to provide us that access. Okay. I just wanted to, to add, I'm, I, I really like uh, the the uh, steps that you're taking to protect the wetlands, uh, what you're doing for the stormwater management, uh, everything, the, the less the less density, which I think is important also. I think it it, it looks so much better than what ha what we had in the past. So thank you. Yes, that's all I have. Yeah, I know it's been um, it's been a while, and I know there was a, there was a, an order issued by. By a judge on this whole thing, and I uh, appreciate the fact that you're willing to work with us to uh, to make it safe for one, and to uh, protect some of the natural resources. That's that was very important to us. So I see. Uh, I'm looking through the um, the responses, and it looks like there's a lot of will complies in here, Craig. Right? I believe. There are plenty of everything's a will comply. Other than these waivers, everything would be will comply. And all, all okay. the waivers are outlined. It's been reviewed by staff. There's conditions attached. Um, everything is enumerated in um, Scott's draft resolution, which would be 
16, I believe. Mm -hmm. 16. Um, so your little cheat sheet is on page three, where or page three where we talk about the waivers. Um, like I said, there are more than typical, which was the stumbling block because of the um, you know trying to incorporate an old plan, do a new ordinance, and then preserve natural resources and still address um, design criteria in your ordinance. So I'm comfortable with everything. I have no other issues to go over tonight. Okay. Just out of curiosity, do you have what the, they'll look like other than just blocks? What is this? Um, do you have a picture with the not, front of the Not with us today. It's going to be a standard two two story townhouse. Uh, I believe they're 22 feet wide. Um, so obviously, we'll be back. We'll, we'll show you exactly what we anticipate they're going to be. Um, but Looks they, like they'll a be beautiful back. park setting. Yeah, it, it, it is actually pretty quiet back there if you're ever back there. But um, it is, uh, it'll be, they're going to be nice. They're going to be, you know, obviously. Uh, two two drive two car driveway so yeah you know, there's not gonna be a parking problem so we're hopeful it's gonna be a successful project okay um, one other question I'm hoping you're gonna get access there so that the children if there's families there can access the park that's out on log college are you have any intention of putting any kind of play area in that neighborhood just so that there's something for the children we were we weren't just based on the, the kind of how tight everything is and how few homes um, again we again the trail would provide some connectivity. There's also the sidewalk, so if somebody was to, to walk or ride their bike, they'd be able to. Is there, there's not sidewalk on Bristol Road, though? There's Bristol Road, it actually ends right here. Um, so we're gonna run it. Are main, you gonna tie in a sidewalk? Yeah. You know, okay. So, um, you know, again, that, that meets kind of one of the goals of pedestrian connectivity. Um, and, and yes, we'll understand that you know, people will want to go down to the park. So we think they'll be able to get there. And we did talk about that at the planning commission. There's okay. no room for it, Janice. And okay, I was just over so taking away room for fire trucks to turn around and stuff like that. If you put, oh, that I just in. figured so, you could put it in a grassy you know. area. That's you know. Yeah. So I know we had discussed her before, Rob, about the, the steep slope. Some of them mm -hmm. were probably not natural. Correct. Um, we're all squared away with mm -hmm. the steep slopes. So, so those waivers were removed. The other one that was removed, we looked, we tightened, we sharpened our pencil. Um, we, we pulled back our, our grading, so we're not going to disturb any of the uh, non-sensitive woodlands. Okay. Or we're going to disturb within the ordinance limit. Right. Um, but the again, the ones that are in sensitive areas will be preserved. So. Okay. Rob and I had two separate conversations to go over the waivers, um, and that's what you see in your draft resolution. So we worked out every condition of your, every waiver. Okay. All right, uh, any other questions? We, we need to have a motion to approve uh, resolution 2023-16, um, conditional preliminary land development approval for uh, 1250 West Bristol Road. Is there a motion? I'll motion. I'll second. Second? Okay, we've heard from the board. Any comments from the, John? All right. Listen, uh, I just had a question. Or, or, uh, uh, John Free almost uh, six up four shows about um, Because it's so tight back there, and we have the thing with the, with the fire department, are we restricted off road parking there? And is there anything like that? And if someone has a party at their house, say they have 10 or 15 cars, where are they going to park? So it would be off, off on the highway, on the road? Around the uh, around the perimeter, well, it wouldn't, be a, wouldn't be on Bristol Road. That's no, for sure. I'm talking about inside the inside. Uh, the loop, well, that's the it's entirely a private road. Down the driveway, just multiple parking. Yeah. There are two two car garages. Two car driveways. Two car. Yeah, driveway. but if you have a say, say your ordinance doesn't that comes up doesn't doesn't have anything to do with it. Okay, I didn't know. I hear I hear you. You have a fire it. while that's yeah. happening, then you got an issue. You yeah. know where we get that. Sports. You always do, and that yeah, that's you got to deal with it when it every municipality. Okay, John, if you had a fire on Lingo Drive and we had a, you know, 50 people in there with 50 cars, we'd have a problem there too. Well, <laughs> I, I hear you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other, uh, any other comments from the public? No. If not, let's call the question. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed. And the chair votes aye, and the motion carries 4-0. Thank you. We'll look forward to seeing you again. This is thank quite you. an improvement. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to yeah, see it. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for working with us and um, having you.
something that worked out for both of us. <laughs> All right. Public comment. Public comment. Going once, going twice. Yeah. <laughs> Come on up, Chris. <laughs> Good evening. Chris McDonald, Hartsville Fire Company. Uh, I just want to let the residents know that Hartsville Fire Company is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. It was founded uh, after a fire on Labor Day in 1923. Um, it was a large barn fire, and residents got together, community got together, and formed the Hartsville Fire Company. We've been part of this community for 100 years now. To celebrate our 100th anniversary, we're going to celebrate it with the community by holding a, what fire service calls a muster at the Gormish Community Park on May 3rd. Uh, it's going to be a display of brand new and um, antique fire, fire trucks from across the area, not just Bucks County. Um, it's going to be from 10 to 3. There'll be food trucks and an ice cream truck, and uh, there'll be displays of some of the antique trucks. They're bringing in um, some really old, horse-strong carriages for this, and it'll be pretty cool. Uh, wow. We have a local wow. fire company that's going to bring a pump, and they're going to get these old fire trucks working again. Wow. Nice. Fantastic. That's on a Wednesday. Uh, May 3rd? May 3rd. I think you're on June 3rd. Yeah. Oh, June 3rd. June 3rd. Oh, sorry. oh okay. Yeah. okay. That's why right. I had the 6th original. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, June 3rd. Yeah, because yeah, originally oh, you guys yeah. said May 6th, and I was like, oh, yeah. okay. So it's June 3rd. It's Saturday. Saturday. All right, well, you know what? That, fantastic, Chris. You know, and it's a, it's a nice little piece of history there, and you guys, for 100 years, you've been there for us, and we appreciate that. Okay. Um, that? We'll, um, we'll make sure we get that out on our uh, Facebook pages and everything as well. Great. I'll spread yeah. the word and I'll be sure to be there. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you yeah. next month, Chris. Okay. Any other public comment? All right. Consent agenda. Consider approval of the Board of Supervisors minutes dated March 2nd, 2023. Bucks County Consortium Stone and Materials bid approval cooperation agreement with Bucks County Redevelopment Authority for the blight program uh, approval of AFSME Warmster Township Employee Organization Agreement or WIDEO for a new four-year contract which we're happy to uh, report extension of the Ben Wilson Senior Activity Center Association lease for an additional seven-year uh, terms based on options in the February 2016 lease agreement Two, two additional seven-year terms, excuse me. Two. Sorry, I missed that. Two additional seven-year terms. Uh, acceptance of Renee Steckland's resignation from Parks and Rec Advisory Committee. That's a term that expires at the end of this year. And the Birdtown Resolution recommendation from the EAC, which I remember uh, we, were, we were applying for that from the Audubon Society when I was the chair of the EAC, and it, it, it had some really, really um, strict requirements to meet that, and we did meet that. I was pretty pretty proud that we did. Mm -hmm. and, um, so we have a resolution for that now as well. And consider waste markets and, and gas and go release number one from the escrow account in the amount of $909,576.55. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second. Second. Okay, Tom, do you want to uh, get into any of this stuff? I know that the, the stone and materials is for public works. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. That's uh, the annual uh, materials bid that uh, is supervised by the uh, Bucks County Consortium of Municipal uh, Governments. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we do a couple different bids with them each year, the, the salt, and then this is the other one. Okay. Uh, the cooperation agreement with the Bucks County Redevelopment Authority for the Blight Program. We're going to get the Blight Program off the ground, and uh, the uh, Bucks County Redevelopment Authority actually has the authority, small a, to conduct the the blight uh, the blighting process in our name when it comes to taking of the blighted property. So they uh, require that we uh, sign off on an agreement, which is very pro forma. Um, okay. The uh, approval of the uh, AFSCME uh, Warminster Township Employee Organization Agreement uh, has been a long time coming, but we finally have an agreement, and uh, it was retroactive to the first of this year. 
for uh, some things and retroactive to March 1st of this year for other things. And that concludes all our contracts. So we're good for a number of years now. That's good. And uh, the extension of the Ben Wilson Senior Activity Center lease for two additional seven-year terms. That's uh, I, that the outgoing director I brought this to my attention that I think it was going to expire at the end of this year. Something she wanted to take care of before she left. Uh, <clears throat> they run the activity center. We own the building. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're leasing it for a dollar. Uh, I'm going to skip F and G and go right to H and say uh, we had, uh, you know what, I'm just going to skip F, G, and H. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, do you want to talk about the, you want to talk about the um, bird town? You go okay? Okay. I, can I ask a question? Sure. On the, um, with the resignation of Ren Renee, Renee Steckline, Steckline um, are the two people that are members at large, can they step up and re replace that person? We are going to. Um, so they have a quorum? We are going team? to evaluate who's been showing up and who's not. I know Mike had sent us an email. It's been a while. You are aware. Yeah. So we are going to terminate people that have not shown up mm -hmm. and we'll be reappointing people that want to participate. Mm -hmm. Well, um, they have some people that are at large that have been coming and attending regularly. Can they just, can we? They cannot just step up. We have to okay. approve it. Okay. Okay. So, but we will evaluate those, those that have not been showing up unfortunately for whatever reason and we're sorry that you uh, either can uh, participate or choose not to um, whether it's your you know your busy schedule or whatever but we're going to have to we this is an important part especially for volunteering so uh, we're going to we're going to take care of that at the next meeting we'll, right. we'll have uh, so anybody that really wants to um, anybody that wants to volunteer for the parks and rec um, please send in your uh, your, an email to the township email address and um, and we'll take everything under consideration. Come on up, Mike. I knew I'd get you up here sooner or later. Yeah, yeah I, um, uh, I'm all for getting more people involved and I know you guys expanded the citizen advisors. I mean, the ordinance says four, but we did seven. I yeah. just wanted to kind of point that out. But I'm not complaining because, like I said, I'd rather have more people involved than not. It's just that the people that count towards our quorum we're not getting yeah I, I understand it's a problem and, it, and July it's July is the last time I've actually had Which a quorum is, right so, so so the people that um, are on that um, citizen advisory I think it was we put them on yeah uh, yeah there's, I'm not going to get into the specific but I mean there's somebody I wouldn't even know them if they, and they were voting member I wouldn't know if they were sitting next to me well, what I'm saying is that, that if there's people that are on the citizens' advisory that are participating, we will probably just move them into. That's why I was asking because, yeah. and the reason I ask now is because their next meeting's on the second of May, and we don't meet until the fourth of May. Well, and they won't have a quorum. We, to make we have to decisions. we have to go through okay I'm everything and see who's showing up and who's not, and probably send them an email or a letter and notify them that if if, if they're not interested or not going to show up, then will be replacing them okay and we're interested uh, in you know checking with anybody on the board I mean I pretty much go to everything uh, with uh, meetings and events although I'm gonna miss the yard sale next month or over next week but um, so I, I know basically who's there who's not mm -hmm. uh, and there's there's some really good committed people there that are citizen advisors they show up all the time just like when I was a citizen advisor or mm -hmm. when I was just a citizen showing up mm -hmm. and they couldn't make a quorum I'm like I'm just sitting here. And right. Yeah. Right. right. And we right. have people to show up all the time, and they uh, they just don't count for support because they're not voting members. Right. So uh, just you know, let me know if I can help in any way. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Pat Boyle and a citizen advisor to Parks and Rec, um, <laughs> 63 10 Centennial Station. One of the issues is that it's not against the people that were appointed. The meeting date changed from a Tuesday to a Wednesday. And that interfered with a lot of people's schedules, so that's how come. Or Wednesday to a Tuesday, we went from Wednesday to a Tuesday, so that's a big issue. I thought that was corrected. No, we that stuck was not with corrected. The, we stuck with the new schedule. Okay. Okay, so that's that's what the problem was. So why did they do that, Pat? Stick with the new schedule? Why? Uh, what, it was decided of those that could show up to vote for it, and we didn't hear from the other people. Okay. Okay. Well, were the other people showing up before that, or no? 
sporadically. All right. So, yeah. so it's this problem's still there. One person can move from one meeting. Right. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I think it's time. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll put people on there that they are. But I just wanted to let you know that that is one yeah. of the issues. Okay. But okay. We're all good with the change. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we want to have participants. We don't want to appoint people and and not have participating members. Yeah, I know she's always there. Defeats the purpose. Yeah. I'd like to um, make a comment uh, regarding Renee Steckline. She has been a member. Do you know for how many years, Tom? I do not. It you might not? be in the. I know that it's. Said. Yeah, I may have missed that too. I know many, many, many years. Am I right, Mike? Mm -hmm. All right. Be, uh, yeah, before me, before, yes. And I just wanted to thank her because that took a major commitment and she participated in almost every event they, we ever had. She was not one of the ones that took That's right. She was right. not. She was. We're losing one that right. shows up, right? We're losing <laughs> the one that always showed up. So, Renee, if you change your mind, let us know. But thank you for all your years of service. We do appreciate it. I'm sure. And thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kathy. You're and uh, as far as the, um, the Birdtown resolution, as I said, when, when, we, when I was on the EAC, we had to go through an incredible amount of, um, I guess, scrutiny and meet certain requirements from the Audubon Society to actually, they acknowledged that we were actually meeting those requirements to be a, for the township to be part of that, which is, you know, bird houses, habitat, mm -hmm. uh, feeding stations, and, and, um, and everything that, not so much at the park, because that's pretty natural now, but in the residence, in your homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to actually prove to them that we were, um, we were compliant. And uh, it, was quite a, it was quite a journey, and uh, it was a difficult thing to do, but we had, I, I thank all the residents. They did a fantastic job. We were able to count all the, all the uh, requirements at each individual house, and we met those requirements, and they approved it, and um, I'm happy that we can um, approve this resolution. Okay, so any other, more, any other comments? All right, is there a did, motion? Second? Motion. Second. Okay. Did we do that already? No, I, I guess we already, we did. Did. We already did. We did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. We did. I know the public we came up. Twice with you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, things. People aren't showing up, and uh, I'm a little confused. We today. got. We women got to keep them straight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's call the question. All in favor. Aye. All opposed, and the chair votes aye. Motion carries four zero. Thank you. Thanks for keeping me straight tonight. <laughs> That's right. I, I, I walked in uh, immediately uh, to a snafu. <laughs> John, you're up instead of Mark tonight. Okay. In the place of Mr. McKee, I will request a motion to approve the bills list dated March 16th, 2023, in the amount of $1,008,791.86, along with the supplemental bills list dated March 16th, 2023, in the amount of $1,033,949.12. So a lot of bills we're paying this month, huh? Yeah, catch it up. <laughs> So mm -hmm. moved. Second? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? Any from the public? All right, let's call the question. Uh, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? And the chair votes aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you very much. We can pay our bills. It's nice to say <laughs> that we can pay our bills as well. No problem. Um, I lost a lot of, uh, a lot up top first couple years I was here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. All right, uh, looking at rolling. the financial reports through the end of February, um, we're tracking very similarly to last year. Uh, we do have a 3% increase in revenue, which is about 57,000, and a decrease in expenses of 3%, which is just under 72,000. So we're tracking pretty, when we're talking about millions of dollars, 50, 60,000 dollars, is actually within a reasonable amount. Mm -hmm. um, tracking towards budget, Revenues are 12% this year and last year compared to budget, and expenses are at 13%. So we are really tracking similar to last year, which is a good thing because we finished last year very well. Mm -hmm. um, some of the big swings that happen, are happening on the revenue side is transfer taxes down 173,000 in just two months compared to last year. I think it was more last year was up compared to prior mm -hmm. years. 
Um, earned income tax revenue, that's up 140,000, which is about 15%, so that's turning at a higher percentage than usual. And building permits are actually up 87,000. So things are going good on the revenue side. I would like, wish the transfer tax didn't, didn't drop as much, but that's one of the hardest things to try and predict. Um, we knew that was going to happen sooner yeah. or later anyway. Yeah, that, that was inevitable. Good right. Keep, keep mm -hmm. up those rates. Um, that's all I have on the financial stuff. I do have some departmental things just to go over. Um, the first thing, good news is we got our liquid fuels funding for the year. That was 931000 That came in, in uh, mid-March. Uh, one of the questions at the last board meeting someone said is with having very little winter storms, pretty much two years in a row so far, um, what happens to the money that was budgeted for it? Well, we pay for a lot, most of the saw in the road program through liquid fuels. So the money stays in there and stays restricted, so we're good on that. Um, uh, the other thing, uh, good news is that we're actually turning over, I see a giant chat come in, I can't help but smile. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, we are about to turn over all the information to the auditors for the year. We're about a month and a half in front of last year of when they came out. I'm trying to have them do most, as much work as possible back in their office. It's easier for them, it's easier for us to just kind of box everything up and give it to them. So I'm hoping to have the audit done uh, at least a month ahead of last year. So that, that's something to look forward to. Yes, it is. And the final thing is we have been looking around at ways to invest some of the reserves that we have, especially in the capital fund, because that's where we have money sitting there for projects, not just this year, next year, but into the future. So the one thing, um, it's an approved bank, it's Univest, is to go into their preferred money market. Right now, on what I'm looking to shift, we're making about three to four, five hundred dollars a month. Uh, the way their interest rates are working, we would probably be making around twenty-one thousand dollars in a month. So this is something I'm looking forward to uh, switching that money, and then I can report out in the next couple months of all the interest that will be going in that. And it, over a year, it could be two hundred fifty thousand. That's more roads that that uh, can be paved with the money. Absolutely. John, you always, uh, you never cease to amaze me. You're always, you're always a uh, great job. And I always. try and be brief, sorry. As yes. No, I that was agree. Fine. I think he caught on to that <laughs> real fast. Not only the, the <laughs> not only the terseness of it, but the, uh, the fact that you're always looking for ways to uh, generate additional revenue for us with what we have, and I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank Good you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no unfinished business. Let's go to new business. New business. We have the Street Road Industrial Park based in O&M action. Who's uh, like to jump on that? I, I'd like to say some comments, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Certainly. All right, so the, the reason this is on the agenda is last year we notified the, this is a basin that's in the Street Road Industrial Complex. It's privately owned. And uh, we've determined through our experts that the uh, basin isn't functioning the way it should be functioning. It's it's uh, several decades old. We don't believe it was, it was ever properly finished, uh, but we do have an operation and maintenance agreement that allows us to, uh, after giving the notice to the property owner to come into compliance with the uh, with the proper uh, functioning of the basin, that if they don't, then we have the right under the O&M that they signed to unilaterally take that action on that property. Uh, and we believe, uh, based on the analysis done by uh, the Township Engineer's Office and the resources available to the Public Works Office, that we'd be able to do this on our own. Uh, and the, I'm not looking for any official action from the board tonight. Uh, we have already put them on notice, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, now that the uh, you know, winter is finally uh, behind us, I think, uh, <laughs> this is something that we want to have uh, Public Works uh, schedule for uh, for some work this year um, and uh, so that's why that's why I put this on the agenda now it looks like uh, Craig's gonna correct uh, uh, every point nope. I just tried to make I'll and, say uh, you were right <laughs> on <laughs> Scott's stealing my information here uh, no uh, Tom uh, summarized that very well I'll put an engineering spin on it uh, we did a deficiency notification to that uh, owner on March 30th, 2022 by certified mail. Uh, in there, we outlined based on our inspection that the facility was not capturing and, and detaining the water as originally designed. Uh, the pipes were, uh, outlet pipe was not connected. In fact, uh, pretty much the water was going in and going out. 
Um, that's probably one of the larger repairs needed, in fact, replaced completely. Uh, there's other erosion uh, that was quite significant. Uh, there was a extensive debris, clogging, um, and a just accumulation of sediment over the years. It was never being properly maintained, which is third item. And then based on our aerial mapping and uh, site visits, uh, it was almost completely covered in vegetation, which again, was not being maintained and um, does not uh, aid in the uh, functionality of the basin. So uh, that was done last year, actually a year ago. Uh, at the direction of the solicitor manager. We have then since, and at uh, Mr. Scott's direction, uh, worked with Public Works. We'll see how much they could do. And I think Andrew's comfortable, we're comfortable in just replacing the pipe. We have a, a preliminary design, um, basically some minor grading, some pipe work, and get it back functioning. Um, I recommend, I think Tom does as well. Uh, Scott will just have to make sure we're following legal requirements there on notification and how we uh, proceed. I think they are aware of it and have not really communicated in the past nine months or six to nine months. Um, I think Mr. Van Lumi, there's... Well, I just went, I can tell you how I know this. I just went to the dentist last week. Last <laughs> time I talked with John Van Lumi about this was at the dentist when I was at six months prior. So <laughs> about since about six months since we talked about this. Are you guys this. scheduled yeah. together? <laughs> Oh, so we hold your meetings. That's pretty. Uh, that's, that's pretty. Pretty. Have fun bleak. with that. Oh, God. oh, it just it was just I was just leaving the parking lot that day, so I remember. Oh, okay. So, um, so it was, yeah, it's been about six months since we talked about it. Um, uh, we talked about different things and at different times, and there is a potential, you know, we could take ownership of the space then as well to make sure it continues to function properly. Or not us, but the the authority as the manager of the stormwater system. And I think that's phase two. So I think yeah. Tom and I, we're all on the same page. Yeah. We don't want to spend a lot of money and then we don't own it or the authority doesn't have access to it. So uh, let's get this thing repaired. It's been talked about for quite a while. I think Tom and I both were in agreement. We talked to staff meeting. We just never put it in front of you. Um, you know, we haven't spent a lot of money, but the next step will require finalizing plans, any permits needed. You know, we have to go through the proper agencies. And then if you're comfortable, um, have Public Works um, do that sometime this year, and then continue to work on acquiring the property, and then we can really let the authority take over, or we can, and, and work on that basin. Okay. And, and I would also want us to pursue, if we could, the uh, lien the property for the expenses of, of the repair. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm we'll okay. to the solicitors, yes. It had, I mean, Tom wanted to give an update. It does say an action item. but. I'd be comfortable if the board would authorize us to finalize the design, uh, work with public works on um, acquiring the proper <coughs> permits. They may want to have a couple changes, and I'd like to finalize it in a package, and then uh, we can give an update at a later meeting. Uh, we've kind of been waiting in limbo here to not spend any more money and start opinion permits and you not authorize the work. So. It's it's time. Yeah, it's been it's it's it needs to be done. Is that's that that's my opinion anyway. It's been way overdue. Way overdue, and we it's have no American cooperation. Mm -hmm. Is that where it is? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's in the back of the East Street Road Industrial Park. Which said, don't need a way. It's on Nina, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Lot 41. Right. Yeah. Same side of the street as the So new how area. much, uh, in right now, it's not capturing basically anything. Water's mm -hmm. coming in and out. So it's not retaining any. Mm -hmm. And uh, and all that discharges down to Twin Streams, correct? Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. that's, that's a mess. They have enough problems down there. Mm -hmm. Now you, um, you saw tonight you had a development in this complex um, years ago and to be honest with you I'm really happy everybody's worked with my office because there's no ordinance there's no requirements that they have to do their own detention but the kind of word by mouth through the engineers everybody's coming and doing their own detention because that basin isn't functioning right and every time they come in with a proposed development I say okay prove that your stormwater gets conveyed down to that basin and it and it's being detained. Well, everybody knows the history. I mean, everybody. Yeah. I haven't had one developer come through in that area that said, hey, there's already a basin built. Hmm. Uh, unless they're right adjacent to it, the couple that are right adjacent to it. So you have you approved one tonight that they took care of their own stormwater management. Plus, the, the new regulations are, are much better than what was done back yeah. 15 years ago. So how much of that industrial park does that capture? All of it? Um, I have. I know. I, you know yeah, no, actually, all of it. Right? Just, all of it. just about all of it. Yes. Just about all of it. Yes. All the, all the, uh, Coming down, Patricia, and all that. Yeah. I have. And through to the other side. 
when we have a finalized design, in fact, uh, Michael's here from my office, he's been working on it. We have a rough drainage area map, we have to finalize everything. We have, I was able to acquire um, design plans um, that they were gonna do this work uh, years ago and then it cost too much and need permits. So I acquired um, a lot of the information, I was in draft form, the survey, so we saved a lot of money. Uh, but all of the park and then actually there's, Thank you. it could be upwards of 125 acres. Well, and we're being conservative. Yeah. We're looking at aerials. Well, so. 125 acres is a significant amount of storm water. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's the total drainage area. Michael. Drainage area to the base is 65, uh, yeah, 66 acres to that 66 base. 66 acres, that's the still whole a significant complex amount of storm water. And around it is drained down to that same area as 125. Okay. And 66 is going to that base. So I, I so um, I'll move that um, that our engineers um, finalize the design. So what, what else was in that? Um, we'll work with with the staff and public yeah. works to finalize the design and then acquiring necessary erosion control uh, permits, permits, plans, prepare those, and get it ready for you. And then um, we can provide an update before we go out. I guess we don't have to bid. So um, if everything's in house, then we'll just present it. Uh, prior to the public work starting. Okay. So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay. I'll, I'll put a budget together, obviously, for all uh, that as well. Yeah. <laughs> with Andrew. If you know somebody's going to be looking for that. Someone will be asking <laughs> for how much. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> all right. Any other questions from the board? I mean, it's been a long time coming. Any from the public? All right. Let's call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And the chair votes aye. Motion carries four up. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. I know that's been a that's been a Nightmare. real problem for years. There was a lot of stuff going on in that uh, mm -hmm. industrial park that uh, was overlooked. All right. Where are we at now? Appointed, appointment of the uh, planning commission member. I am going to move we appoint Jim Crossan. I'll second it. It's not a it's, a, it's the Blight Committee. The Blight Committee, but member of the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. member to the Blight Committee, oh, yes. Oh, okay. That's thought that's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. No. I did? <laughs> yeah. All right, we well, knew what you, you meant. I'll say. You've Thanks for keeping me straight tonight. <laughs> it started off as it started off yeah, rough. Brian, you really <laughs> messed him up. When you weren't here, he had me all messed up tonight. I'll but second that. Anyway, all right. Seconded by Kathy. Um, I think then we'll be ready to roll with that, right? We have enough, we have everybody, the membership's complete. Yep. All right. Yes. Questions from the board? From when the public? When are they going to meet? <laughs> huh? when are they gonna meet? Yeah. yeah, how soon can we start? <laughs> Sorry. We'd have to advertise the meetings. Mm -hmm. Well, Jeff was here earlier. We have to advertise the meetings. Yeah, you'll have to set up the meetings and advertise them. And okay. I'm going to vote on it, and then I'm going to leave it to my, my women here. <laughs> is that that I can't control? <laughs> yeah, Tom told me it was, it, it's going to take a little few months or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. Control this All right. So let's call the question. All, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries 4 0. I, I just want to make a comment based on that. And we have, obviously, everybody is anxious to. We do have at least one that I am involved with that we need to get done. But before we, the board, the committee can even meet. There is uh, a lot of stuff that needs to be done on the administrative side. We have to notify, we have to go through the code enforcement process, which we are now in the middle of. Uh, we have a hearing scheduled with, with the district justice uh, mm -hmm. to prosecute the violations in the uh, abysmal state of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if we get that affirmative ruling from the judge, we would then notify the uh, township, excuse me, the committee officially that we think this is something that we, the staff, think this is something that the committee should consider for uh, designated as a blighted home. And there are some things we have to do at that meeting mm -hmm. that include going through the, on the record, going through the history of the property, sharing photographs. Everybody has to go and visit its site. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, but uh, I imagine we're going to be, by the, probably by the middle of the summer, we should be ready to do this. Okay. Uh, but for the one that I'm thinking of, which I won't disclose the location, but all right, tonight. So thank you very much. <laughs> sure, they may know that. who it is. Yes. All right. This is a good one. 
Resolution in support of Bucks County Township officials for establishing a consortium for legal and legislative action concerning sale of municipal water and sewer assets. The Picado, uh, the Bucks County uh, Township officials had asked that each of the member municipalities, the member townships adopt a draft resolution um, that they supplied uh, <laughs> to in advance of the PSATS conference mm -hmm. uh, coming up later this month. Uh, to support the idea that uh, if there if somebody else wants to bid for the Bucks County Water and Sewer Authority that there are uh, changes to the law first mm -hmm. so this would allow for the for this uh, consortium that would be created for all the municipalities to fund uh, lobbying and uh, to to uh, uh, modify legislative Act uh, 12 I'm sure that's to modify Act 12, which has been put forth and enacted years ago to make it difficult for municipal authorities uh, to operate and to make it easier for private water companies to purchase them. So I'm pretty, pretty, pretty on top of that one too, Tom. So thank you. And the reason I didn't put it on the consent agenda is because it's not. It wasn't the resolution was written by us. Right. right. It was written by them. So I thought. You know, and you're all gonna. I'm sure you're all gonna hear about a lot at Hershey, yeah. mm -hmm. right? At the beautiful lodge. <laughs> so thank you very much. I know Judy will be busy up there again. Oh yeah, <coughs> we all will. All right. Is there a motion to uh, establish the? Uh, um, it's a resolution, right? It's in. The, well, it's their resolution. It's their resolution. We, yes. we it's would a support. Don't it's yeah, to support. Support, the support the resolution. Is there a motion That's to support, right. support the resolution? Nice. Second? Second. Okay. Any uh, more questions from the board? Questions or comments from the public? All right. Let's call the question. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, ladies okay. and gentlemen of the board. I'm uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Do you want to answer? Uh, sure. Let's uh, let's get to the last one, which is a very important. Uh, right. We could segue into the other thing, too. Yes. Yes. So the replenishment of Shenandoah Woods escrow with yeah. the Bucks County Redevelopment Authority yeah. in the amount of four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> I think we have a check here now. Yeah. Well, well he's oh, he's not, he's not even talking. listening. He's, he's not, not even paying listening. attention. <laughs> we have a check. Well. Well. Listen, we, we have to replenish the Bucks County Redevelopment right. Authority yeah. you know for 485000 Can you help us out? Yeah, can you help us? <laughs> 298000 of that is for the concrete removal. Yes. For, for, for Fritz Banky that was alluded to early before Jeff, who took us a round of applause and then left with four hundred. $85,000 bill on the table. That's okay. right. <laughs> he didn't stick around for well, that. If he doesn't yeah. stick around, that means he doesn't want it. Right, right. obviously. <laughs> I, I heard I missed something. You sure? did. Uh, state Rep. Mr. Monroe. You know, you know what happens when you become a state representative? Is you, lose you forget control. about us? You, no, no. <laughs> you lose control over your calendar. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, I was triple booked tonight. I started my day triple booked. Uh, well, we, but, uh, we took a short recess and regrouped, but... Okay. The women on the board kept me uh, in control tonight, so I, I was I all over. Got, I was you, all over the you place. You easily get frazzled. Yeah. Well, okay. no, I don't. But uh, that was a good one. Okay. <laughs> you frazzled him. Don't oh, let him yeah, deny it. Okay. <laughs> is that our check? Uh, but you're here. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Frank's not, and neither is J Jeff Darwick. But uh, we'll we'll have to. They were here earlier. Yeah. We'll have another photo up. Yeah. I, we don't, I don't want to take up anyone's time at home yeah. uh, for that, but I did want to just acknowledge it. Uh, thank you. Uh, I know I, I got I got plenty of messages, but that is what happens when you become a state representative. You're all over the place, uh, and you're completely at mercy of your calendar on your phone. Uh, and unfortunately, that took me uh, a good hour away today uh, for for several different things. So, but uh, that's okay because you bring. Um, checks with you, so we're okay. And we forgive you. That's the best part of being a state <laughs> representative. Right, you're forgiven. We're immediately so, forgiven. <laughs> so hopefully it'll be one of many. Yes. Thanks, yes, everybody. and this is another Thanks, uh, this Thank is another you. shovel ready project, Brian, and we appreciate all your hard work. Let's give him a hand. He missed yep, it. Yeah, he last missed time. it. Yay! All right. Okay. All right. So, is there a motion to replenish? Motion. motion. Second. Second. Okay. Any questions from the public? No, John. Brian wants to get his picture taken with the check. 
Does he? <laughs> oh, you're a spokesperson now? <laughs> Wait, man, you oh have man. to be the in charge of the calendar. <laughs> you're going to have to. <laughs> All right, let's call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And the chair votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. Oh, and it's good to see the slabs are going to be coming out very soon. Boy, that money went fast. Sure it does. <laughs> Okay. Tom? Nope. Go ahead. I'm done. Nope. Okay. I'm done. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you're up. And I'm back. All right. So <laughs> at the, a couple of meetings ago, I can't remember which one, we had a representative from the Portnoff uh, Law Firm was here. I can't remember his name either. Uh, but he wanted to explain why they kept asking us to adopt an ordinance. Mm -hmm. And uh, he explained it. Uh, and then uh, following that, uh, we talked about briefly uh, how we wanted to proceed and the next step from the board was let's uh, let's let's see what the ordinance actually says before we consider adoption so we have it tonight and basically what it is is it does two things it seems to me uh, it it sets forth uh, a fee schedule that Port Nuff will use uh, to collect uh, delinquent uh, property tax bills, trash bills, street light bills, uh, based on what they need to do to collect it. They need to write a letter. It's you know the fee schedule's in there. It's ten bucks. If they need to, you know, do something at the farther end of the scale to get the result they need, it goes up a couple a couple bucks. Uh, and additionally, the uh, uh, it also requires they they strongly believe that it requires. Thank you. Uh, that uh, they can't take any action uh, under the statute until we, as a township, approve at a meeting of the governing body, specifically an ordinance that lets them do that. So what, with the board's permission, what I want to do is put this on the May agenda for adoption. Okay. Unless there's something in the ordinance that you think needs further clarification, further discussion, but it really just establishes a fee schedule. My question is that when we hired these guys, they had a fee schedule. So what happened to that? So that, that was part of what he was um, sort of trying to explain. Uh, the, the fee schedule is actually established by statute. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that fee schedule in the statute has changed. So we therefore have to change our uh, fee schedule okay. to meet that. And if I, if I remember what he said correctly, it was actually included some lessening of fees or making additional steps in the process so you don't get to those escalated activities as quick yes, yes. Okay. so this is an act that yes uh, so, so we're required to um, uh, if we are to, an ordinance if we are to collect things under the statute the statute the municipal claims and tax lien act um, we would have to adopt the fee schedule and Okay. In their case, because we have an outside agency doing it, that's why we do it via ordinance. Okay. Okay. So this is just the new schedule is what you're saying? That Correct. Needs, okay. Okay. Any objections? No. No. Okay. Not that I saw. Okay. So we will advertise it then as drafted and We'll get it on the agenda for the May 4th meeting. Okay. Um, giving away the idea that I want to ask you not to have another meeting in April, but um, thank you. You can, you can certainly ask that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's coming up. You Item 11. <laughs> getting there. <laughs> it's coming up. Uh, oh, there's, is, before I hand it off to the solicitor, there's, there's one other thing I just wanted to mention, uh, and that uh, we are going to be... Uh, discussing something under the engineer's report that pretty much touches on uh, the engineer's office, my office, police department, public works. Uh, so uh, I have a question that pertains to that. Yes. Okay. Uh, but for now, that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Until number 11, correct? No, no, no. What Until is number that? 10. He's yeah, number 10. He's number that's 10. right, number 10. <laughs> okay. There's two blanks there in number 10. Yeah, I know. I, I see that. Right. But there won't be. No, there won't be. <laughs> Uh, Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, I just have one update. Um, I believe it was at our last meeting. You did the conditional approval subject to the responsible contractor reviews for the paving and curb round, curb round contracts, or was that two months ago? 
well, either way, we've completed the reviews. Uh, our office, with Craig's office, uh, those contracts uh, have been awarded. It was NJS Concrete again for the curb ramps and uh, James D. Morrissey for the paving. Um, okay. They both satisfied the requirements of the responsible contractor ordinance, and they'll be moving forward. I believe Aaron had said we're looking for a May start date. Or okay. at least that's the earliest they can Do start. Do we have the uh, road, the paving schedules on, the, on our website yet? I don't believe all the dates have been set. I believe just May is the first they'll the be able to start, start working. Date. So they're working out those actual schedules. We, okay. we put some stuff on when it was adopted by the board. We put uh, the, uh, we recently put on the, uh, the, the items that the statute requires. Uh, the law requires to have public, for public notice for a couple of days. We're going to try to get the ad in the newspaper. Uh, on uh, on the township engineer's schedule, as if we could do that, uh, and uh, as instructed by the township engineer's office. Uh, so hopefully everything will stay on course. Uh, You're up for that. <laughs> you lost me there. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got a little lost too. Uh, I we was were instructed to run the ad in the paper. Oh, we skipped that. After. Uh, Reading an earlier email that said you guys were going to do it, but yeah, it's all right. We're all everything's the same taken team. care of there. All right, let's get um, back to my original question. At some point, we are going to put the road paving schedule on the, yes. on the website. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. We're going to put on the the dates, uh, okay. locations. We're going to we're going to make Perfect. sure it's all very uh, accessible. Perfect. And you know, and the, these guys have been doing our work for us now for third year. Yeah, third year. Third year. Yeah, yeah. The same. And they do a great job. I yes. know. Same for both. Morrissey's. Uh, Tim, if you're out there listening, or Dalton, you know how fast they move, so mm -hmm. be ready. They move and they shake. Yes, they do. They'll bring they their A-team. They'll bring too. their A-team as they always do. Yep. Can I just add a note that people have, some people, a couple women have said that they hate our roads, they hate Street Road, they hate York Road, Easton Road because of the white lines that are fading and they can't see in the rain and things like that. So they should speak to PennDOT because they're spoke on to our PennDOT. roads. Oh, you did? Yeah. Great, I spoke Judy. To Go ahead. Next, uh, uh, this spring, they're starting a new line where they're going to paint all their lines on all their roads yellow. Okay. okay. All right. Very nice. It's <laughs> nice to know. Thanks for, thanks for uh, checking that out. I appreciate that. I called and asked if they could put the metallic paint like they use in the south. When you're in Texas, all the street lines have metallic at night so you can see the lines. And when it's raining, you can see the lines. It's nice. So well, hopefully most, that'll happen too. Most but we'll see. they're going to do is go yellow right now. Yep. So yeah. we'll see. Listen, if we can get them to paint them, that's good. <laughs> well, yeah. That's, good. that's a that's a step in the right direction. Yeah. I just came back. From, I just came back from a soccer tournament in Baltimore, and when you change the line from Maryland to Pennsylvania, it's a free for all. Can, you know where you know where the line is because of where the road changes. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Go ahead, Craig. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have our April engineers report. Um, jumping back to the road program, uh, where I thought Tom was going to go was the pre-construction means are scheduled for next Tuesday. Okay. So once we have, and Aaron will be handling that along with Michael, um, both the curb ramp and the uh, paving uh, are on the same day uh, here at the township building. So once that's all worked out, I'm sure information will be presented and put on your website um, once we get that for everybody. So okay. Pre-con means are next week on that. Um, you, Mr. Scott also alluded to, and I think it's on the agenda, uh, we were directed to look, uh, um, based on that, I think this is an ongoing issue, some complaints at Centennial Road in revolutionary way. Yes. Regarding some, and I'm not even going to talk about, I think obviously there's speeding, uh, rolling stops, uh, I'm not sure what else. I'm across the street. Uh, I, I, <laughs> And I, I know. scream at these people all day. <laughs> so I, I believe staffs on the, uh, along with the chief uh, public works, Mr. Scott, myself, my staff, uh, we're on the same page there. So our traffic engineers went out, uh, did preliminary investigation uh, at Centennial and Revolutionary. We got that report to Mr. Scott. Um, we are rec and again, I think this is more of just an update. We'll have more action items for you in next month. Um, we also then went and looked at Centennial Road in Hancock, and we also recommend an all-way stop there as well. So if you're gonna do one intersection, I recommend you do both. Um, we actually looked at site distance. There's some recommendations we'll provide 
it's not whether or not it's in the right of way or not, or whether we need to knock on some doors. But um, there's some landscaping and, and site visibility, um, especially on the second intersection. So right. both that's reports that, recommend that. the same. Oh, so I agree. And I, I, yeah. yeah, and I, I did receive quite a few phone calls from folks that said I almost got hit. You know, in Centennial Revolutionary, because these people don't stop at the stop signs. Yeah. It's craziness. Yeah. So thank you for. And whatever you can do to help out in that situation before I, somebody gets really I think there's, 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 there's some preliminary things we can yeah, do. Yeah, there's first, some preliminary right? things. Uh, even before the stop signs, you could add little, I think uh, maybe Ken wants to talk about that. You could add little signs underneath the stop I love sign. Them. They're, you know, stop, stopping is free. Full stops roll, free. What's that? Uh, rolling stops $250? Whatever. Whatever. But not here, right? It's only $125. That's 125 dollars right? Honestly, uh, Ms. Pellers have put that up. We have uh, several in the area. Ken knew about it. I love it. that sign. Um, <laughs> and, and it works. Mm -hmm. you can Especially also, when there's an officer sitting there at the, yeah, at the stop right. sign. Yeah, right. Uh, um, you can also, uh, yeah, and I don't know, I haven't talked to the chief directly. I know Aaron's been working with him. We can um, obviously increase police enforcement, but also, um, there's other options as far as uh, radar signs. I don't know if you've really been, sometimes we've now been purchasing the, the signs. You know, they flash when you yeah, go above the speed right. rate. But those are more speeding in the stretches, not at a stop sign. So, right. but again, if you start showing that, that activity at that intersection or that road, you know, it does slow down. But then as soon as that goes away, so the stop signs will, will help with that. You still need to enforce it. Both intersections are the same. Um, recommendations and at some point we'll have an action item for you um, in an upcoming meeting but we're wrapping all those up one's done the other one's ready to go uh, they look very identical and uh, I believe there was so another thing we were talking about too because um, people see that traffic light down there street road or I mean uh, county I, line correct? I, as punishment tonight I had to do all this because I did not attend the meeting last week with Mr. Scott and he said you're gonna do all the presentations <laughs> <laughs> so I heard that our traffic engineer recommending um, working with that light which I think is another great improvement to uh, put the shield on so you can't the see the green so yeah. they're just not baffles right um, so there's a couple things we can do I thought you were at that meeting what I was there <laughs> you weren't there no <laughs> I thought you were. So oh, I'm losing my mind. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you traffic. Were. You weren't there either. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That was that was, that was Landon. That was Landon. 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 <laughs> we have several recommendations and we'll prioritize them and have some action items for you next month or the following month's meeting. Yeah. All right. So there you go, Kath. And I know Mark was uh, concerned about that right. as well. I've so already got that call as well. Okay. So yes. we can noodle with the stop signs, mm -hmm. uh, with more stop signs or brighter stop signs or put the put the put the baffle and the, yeah. the blockers on the on the street on the traffic signal. Uh, things we can do to encourage people to obey the stop sign there I'll, I'll tell you what there's there's a on my way to my daughter's house in Bluebell um, I can't remember the name of the road but it's a very very heavily traveled road and there's a one intersection where it's a three-way stop sign it's a T intersection and there's a lot of traffic on this road and they put those free you know full stop free rolling stop and on occasion more than not there's a police officer there and so now I've been through there for the last couple months. There's not there's not an officer there. Everybody stops. Mm -hmm. So Good. maybe that's what we need. I also Good. wanted to mention too. Uh, my one of my major concerns is when the high school gets out. Does the kids come down that street and they fly? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of traffic. Yeah, and that's a blind corner there. Right. It's a blind. Yeah. Right. It's a blind corner. Right. And you know how the kids drive. So I don't know what deterrents we're going to do. I don't do. know if it's but just kids anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to respond to her comment. Is there, are we able to put another speed hump further up the hill so it slows them down on the way down? So that would be like phase three or four, and I didn't want to get into that tonight, right. but traffic calming has not been done in the past year. And I, I think we got a whole discussion on that, so I right. chose not to bring it up. But okay. our engineers do recommend that could be, you know, your third or fourth. I think that's a larger discussion. Okay. I mean, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks. No, that's fine. I, so you know, rubble strips or something. Like that, we'd be breaking. We'd be breaking new ground. We'd be plowing new ground yeah. with uh, streets. Yeah. I just think of they start at the top of the hill and see right. how fast they can get by the bottom of the hill. I believe in the 
15 years I've been here, we have not done traffic. Even your traffic engineer, if I wasn't, uh, did not do traffic calming. Now, players change, people, you know, yeah. staff changes, so that's a, that's we can have that discussion. Okay. Um, well, since to the new traffic engineer, I want to give him something to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Can we have him make those signs for uh, uh, Norwood and Lemon? And there's a couple other stop signs mm -hmm. in Speedway I know that would benefit from that stop sign sign. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I have one other thing. They'll take it. They'll do a service. Certainly. Yeah. All right. That's another big one. Um, we've been working with Public Works, uh, Aaron and Andrew, and our environmental uh, staff on the Public Works above ground storage tanks. Um, that turned into some repairs into, um, looks like we're going to be replacing uh, pumps and the cost has gone up a little bit so uh, we were getting ready to go out to bid um, we've been working with mr. Scott on that I think that's going to be bid next or um, advertised next week it's advertised on Tuesday, Tuesday. Or Friday. so next week will be advertised we'll see what kind of bids we get uh, just to point out the estimated construction cost around 168,000 with total cost to be about a hundred ninety two thousand Thirty thousand dollars is for replacing the pumps versus repairing them. Andrew uh, felt strong about that. I believe he talked talk to Tom. We support that as well. So that each pump's about fifteen thousand, and then to run new lines instead of trying to repair lines, unfortunately that's uh, upwards of forty-five thousand dollars for that. So that's about seventy-five thousand of the total. Uh, but instead of doing repairs and doing them again, uh, I think this is coming out of the ARPA funds for that. <laughs> So we'll see where the bids come in, and you can decide right. if it's a viable project as okay. far as where the funds come from. But that is going to be advertised next week. So that's to remove the underground piping and that pit that was leaking, right? Yeah, we did the investigation. Yeah, you went through the whole yeah. soil investigation? Yes, we okay. have all that. Um, I'm just wanted to advise you that it's going out okay. for advertisement next week. All right. And well, that's all I have. Something that needs to get done. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Craig. All right. Tom, I think you're up again. Great. Thank you, sir. Uh, first off, I just want to announce that the offices of the township will be closed tomorrow uh, for the holiday. Uh, and I, I should have checked to see what the library schedule is, but I didn't. Uh, so I apologize for that. It's OK. Uh, I am recommending, uh, Mr. Chairman, based on the items that we've discussed tonight and have talked about should be at the, discuss at the next meeting, that we set that next meeting for the first Thursday in the month of May, which would be May the 4th, 2023. Okay. Any objections? None. None. No objections. And as a corollary, we officially canceled the meeting that is scheduled for April the 20th. Yes. Yes. No objections. Thank you. Okay. That is all I have. Thank you. Round two, public comment. Go ahead, Mike. Mike Farris, uh, 948 Cornell Drive. Uh, I just wanted to invite everybody to the uh, next uh, Environmental Advisory Council meeting. Um, we're hosting the uh, Delaware Riverkeeper Network, and they're going to be presenting a, um, uh, a talk entitled Stormwater 101. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important topic that everybody in this township already knows about. I mean, we have the whole stormwater issue. We're, we're changing things. But more importantly, Show up at the meeting, you're eligible for a uh, stormwater credit. Uh, oh, no kidding. Yes. So you're literally will get paid to attend the meeting. Uh, I was planning on attending anyway, Mike. I, I so, attend them. Yeah, and I know uh, <laughs> Dalton, Dalton George will be there as well. Yeah, and uh, it, it sounds like it's going to be a um, pretty interesting uh, discussion there. So, we hope uh, so. We're inviting everybody in the township to show up and uh, make a little uh, money in the process, so that's uh, nice. I get the credit on your bill. April 24th, 7 o'clock in this room. That's the uh, it's fourth Monday of every month. That's fourth Monday of this month. Thank you. All right, thanks, thanks. Mike. John? No? You got okay. <laughs> Excellent. I got you. You have important things to discuss. <laughs> All right, supervisor's comments. <clears throat> okay. Do you want to go, Kath? All right. I don't care. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, I'd like to... <laughs> okay. Ah, there's our check. I would like <laughs> to uh, wish everybody happy holiday. And uh, I'm sure a lot of folks know 
that it's really unusual this year that you've got multiple religions having their holidays this this week. So regardless of, of what you practice, I wish you Happy Easter, uh, Passover, uh, or whatever whatever you do, celebrate. And uh, Happy Easter, everyone. Have, have fun with your Easter egg hunts with your grandkids, kids, whatever. <laughs> And uh, see you next time, next meeting. Thank you. All right. Go ahead, Judy. We'll just go right down the line there. Oh, okay. I wanted to finish up uh, library comments because I didn't finish before because I didn't want to give you too much at once. <laughs> but a lot uh, to handle. I understand that the architectural plans for the restroom renovation are complete, and the architect is currently preparing bid specs. Correct. Okay. And the renovation's going to include an ADA restroom, a nursing room, and two private study rooms. It's going to be really nice. It's going to be really nice. You know. and, some, and some rudimentary work to the existing bathrooms to make them a little more pleasant. Yeah. And um, they are continuing the outreach efforts to different places. And right now, they have brought library services and out outreach um, to seven locations in the community in March. They went to Play and Learn Preschool, Montessori's Children's House, St. Paul's Preschool, Vita Family Services, McDonald Elementary School, Christ Home Independent Living, and Ben Wilson Center. So they are really making the rounds, trying to show people what they can do with the library and what's available and how to use it and how to get online with it and get people to sign up for library cards. And uh, they have a full calendar of events for summer, so check in at warminsterlibrary.org and see what, what's there for you, okay? <laughs> have a happy Easter, happy holiday, peaceful spring. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Judy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Janice. Oh, happy holidays to everyone. I also want to remind you that now that the weather's nicer, the kids are outside on their bicycles riding all over the place, so please be mindful and stop at the stop signs and <laughs> watch out for the children that are outside playing. Um, a lot of them are loud. I don't know why yelling seems to be common now, but <laughs> <laughs> my neighbors complain all the time because I always have the kids at my house. But uh, just be safe and you know, watch out for the kids and stuff because they're really not paying much attention. So have a great weekend. Be safe. Be happy, and enjoy your time with your family. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Janice. All right, I just want to say to all the residents and everyone, have a great holiday. Be safe. Enjoy. And to all our contractors that are working in the township, um, we know who you are. We know who you we are. We see you. Uh, <laughs> you need to have permits. You need to post those permits. You need to comply with our ordinances. Uh, if not, you'll be hearing from our license and inspections. Um, so other than that, um, everyone be safe and enjoy the holidays. All right, motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. All right.